see when I get the recording going. Cool. It looks like it started. So welcome, 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 everybody. Please um, don't be shy to turn on your cameras too. I personally, I like seeing people when I talk. It makes me feel more comfortable because it's like you can read the room even though it's virtual. So it's kind of awkward. Um, but thank you all for being here. Nice to meet you, Drayton. I see that you wrote in the chat. Thank you for doing so. Um, and thank you for attending, everybody. So um, just to start off, I'll tell you um, a little bit about myself. So I am the host for today. And so the I am the national student director for can do. Um, so I sit on their board. Um, I maybe I'm if you have attended the, the economic development youth summit, maybe I've seen you there, um, or you've seen me. But either way, I'm always open to talk and always open to let you know about what's going on in can do what there's for youth. Or even if you have suggestions for me, I can definitely always I'm always open to hearing that and bringing it back to um, like the board or the staff. And that's kind of how so, th something like this came up. And so this is definitely a chance for you to be able to share your voice. And it is our first ever youth forum. And so that's why like we would love feedback and everything from you because you'll shape how this goes into the future. And so if you want it to be more interactive, less interactive, um, however you want it, if you want us to add something in, then we're definitely always open to that. Um, but yeah, just a bit, a bit more about me. I go to the University of Saskatchewan. I'm a fourth year um, in commerce. I don't know if anyone else here is maybe in school. Feel free to let us know in the chat. Um, but yeah, I go to the U of S and I started the Indigenous Business Student Society there. Um, and that's kind of how I got up. I started finding out about can do's because when I got more involved in school, I started finding out um, more about opportunities in the community. And so that's how I found out um, about the youth summit. And then I attended the can do youth summit back in, I want to say the years are messed up to me because of this pandemic. So I actually <laughs> would love to tell you a year, but I can't. Um, but it was the year before we had to go in um, into everything being virtual. So not this past summer, but the summer before that. Um, and then it was an amazing opportunity. Um, and then so then from there, I applied to be the national student director on the board. And now here I am and I get to work with amazing people every day. And um, can do it is honestly it's like having another family on top of everything else and so the more you can get involved with can do definitely do so because um, they're always there for you at the end of the day like I know that I'll randomly email Svitlana and I'll ask her a question and she'll be there in a second or um, everything it's just there's so much that you can do and so many opportunities and webinars and things that you can learn from um, so definitely amazing, but I know I'm rambling and I tend to do that. So write in the chat and just be like, Aubrey, this ain't it. And let me know and I'll stop because <laughs> um, um, I'm learning as we learn um, to on and how to navigate this for sure. So I'm um, definitely nice to meet you, Jacob, and nice to meet you, Erica. Um, thank you so much for coming out here. And thank you for dropping places that we can find you because I definitely would love to connect in the future. Um, so we also do have um, gifts and we also do have the evaluations at the end, like I mentioned. So those will be sent out to you afterwards. Um, so please definitely um, don't be scared to fill out those evaluations because you can win get prizes for filling those out. Um, so definitely never um, shy away from that because can do. Um, I know that everyone sometimes likes to win a, a couple things when you um, attend these. So fill out those evaluations and from there, um, there will be a draw for the gifts. And so um, in the different gifts, um, you can win various different prizes, of course. Um, and so definitely get involved. We have a lot of great things there. Um, so one of the things is you can win a beauty bag. Um, it's a very, it's very beautiful. Even if you don't use it yourself, you can always give it to somebody or utilize it for another aspect in your house. Um, so it's from, I'm so sorry if I say this wrong, Danielle, but it's um, Kad, Kadawe Sisu Boutique. Um, and it's very beautiful. It's like a cook em scarf type of theme around it. Um, we also have Nippy Esqueo Consulting. We have hoodies um, from there and two face masks. Um, and then we also have gift cards to Nietzsche gear. So don't be scared to fill out those evaluations because then you will get a chance to win one of those gifts. And also we have a queso mentorship, um, which we'll also be um, able to do too. So how, if you guys want to know a bit about that, it's um, provided to one selected can do youth connect participant between the ages of 18 and 35. Um, and so this is a cool opportunity. Definitely hear, hear me out, okay? So this is a five-day 
um, mentorship and it's valued at $2,500. Okay. So it doesn't have a timeline and it can, can be completed at your own pace. So you get to choose. And of course it'd be free of cost to you. And so all you have to do is if you are interested, um, just submit a short essay. I know that those kind of like steer us away sometimes when you hear, oh, I have to like write about it, but it's only 250 to 500 words. So it's like a roughly a page. Um, and so definitely a great opportunity, something you can put on your resume, a place that you can make connections. So definitely keep an eye out for that queso mentorship. Um, so all you have to do is email that short essay um, of 250 to 500 500 words, words before March 16th to Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, if you can throw your email in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, and then you just have to email it to her and then you'll be, um, have the possibility of being selected for that. So that's a $2,500 value. So definitely please, please, please sign up for that because it's an amazing opportunity. Um, I see people are still writing in the chat. So thank you so much for coming. Um, so I guess, without um, rambling any longer, I will start off, um, we're gonna kick this off with an interview with Stanley Barnaby. And so if you don't know Stanley, Stanley recently became the president of Can Do. Um, I've had the honor and the privilege of sitting on the board of directors with him for the past um, year and a little bit. He's amazing. He has so much knowledge behind him. Um, I work at Indigenous Clean Energy also. And so um, my boss always has nothing but great things to say about him too, because they're both from the same area. And so I'm so excited. We're just going to kick this off with a bit of an interview so you kind of um it's a nice way to start so you can kind of see like how we interact and then you can interact in your breakout sessions the same um so without further ado i'll welcome stanley to the stage so welcome stanley thank you Aubrey it's a pleasure to be here and thanks uh for everyone for joining us uh i guess this afternoon for me but it could be um you know all sorts of different times for everyone that's joining us today Definitely. Yeah. I don't know what time zone everyone's in. I'm in Saskatchewan time, so Central Standard Time. So um, I don't know if it's early or late for you, but um, welcome to, to spite that all. But um, Stanley, um, to kind of kick this off, I guess, um, I know that I obviously didn't cover everything that you do. Um, so maybe let's start off by maybe tell us a bit about yourself and how you found out about Can Do and got involved and got to the role that you're at now. Yeah, so I guess I'm just, uh, so I'm Big Mog, I'm from uh, the Liskus First Nation, and uh, how I came to know about CANDU was, uh, would have been right around the first year or so of uh, my time at U at the University of New Brunswick when I was pursuing my bachelor's degree um, in business administration, and uh, I was part of the Mi'kmaq uh, Maliseet Institute, and that's, uh, they had, they were a partner of CANDU at the time, and that's when we were made aware of the opportunity to um, receive our technical Aboriginal economic development certificate as part of our um, First Nations business certificate with UMB. So um, while we were studying for our First Nations business certificate, we were taking all the necessary courses to receive our technical Aboriginal economic development, uh, also known as TAID certificate. Cool. Yeah, definitely. I know that when I first heard about the certifications from Candu, I wanted to do them so bad, but then I was like, sometimes you put too much on your plate, but it's definitely a goal for the future. Um, so I, it's definitely cool to see that you did that. So becoming Candu president, how did that feel after like knowing the path that you took to get involved with Candu? Like how did that path play out and how do you feel now being the president? Uh, it was definitely a very humbling experience when, you know, obviously, uh, you know, a group of my peers and other directors um, essentially, you know, elected me as president. So, you know, it's it was just uh, maybe would have been right around six years ago where I was just on the youth committee that was the initial group that developed the youth conference that's been going on since 2018. And I kind of chaired that committee, presented to the board of directors, presented to, you know, the executive committee. And then I think it would have been in 2018 that's when I was, uh, I became the New Brunswick and PEI representative on the CANDU board. And, uh, you know, like you said earlier, like being a part of the CANDU board is like being a part of a family. And I've, uh, I've experienced that since like 2015 when I first received my TAID certificate. 
and it's just been a it's been a great experience with the organization and uh, I'm a you know a huge supporter of the organization and uh, that's why I like sitting you know as I really enjoy sitting on the board of directors and um, now being the president uh, you know it's I'm forever grateful. Amazing. Yeah. And Stan is an amazing person to sit on a board with. He has so much knowledge. I feel like I learn from everyone on the board every time I'm there. And I feel so awkward because I'm a student sometimes. <laughs> so I'm like, these people are talking in languages that are just going over my head sometimes, but um, it's definitely amazing. So if anyone ever wants to steal my role away from me one day, then um, I'm sure it'll get posted again at the end of my term. Um, but awesome. So I don't know if everyone knows this um, or if you've heard of the Can Do Economic Development Youth Summit. Um, if you have though, a fun fact about Stan is actually he was on the planning committee that made that come to light. And so um, it's it's so new to Can Do. And so, um, but also like it's developed so much so um what was your experience with that and can you share with the youth like that are new to economic development like how did it feel initiating uh something like that um it was so it was in 2015 when i was first asked to sit on the committee and i think there was a group of us that uh, we got invited we met in edmonton uh we met at the enoch cree um hotel we were there for three or four i think it was three days and we just did a lot of planning, a lot of discussions. What, you know, what did we want a youth summit to look like? And we, you know, a part of the youth summit's a case study because there was a lot of knowledge, a lot of things, a lot of planning. And it's a, a lot of this, a lot of the things you experience at the conference for the youth summit is what an economic development officer would do on their day, day to day and planning opportunities for their community. So it's a really hands on experience. and. Um, just seeing it grow over the years, um, I know I'm extremely proud of it, and uh, you know, and I, I, we've attended as a board the last two years, as well, and we engage with all the groups, we help support the groups, and uh, you know, it's just a, overall, it's just a really good experience for everyone. Yeah, I can say from experience, it was probably one of the best conference type events that I've ever been to. Um, I still am friends with everyone I met at the Youth Summit. And so I'm so appreciative of everyone who goes into planning that event and you for starting it. Um, because now I have connections that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. And I can't, I can't say thanks enough for that. But um, of course, the purpose of it is to teach youth and advance youth and economic development. Um, and so for you, obviously, that's the field that you're in. And so how did you get involved with JEDI where you currently work um, and just economic development in general? So how I started at the Joint Economic Development is uh, I was actually, I think I was still in school. I was looking for like opportunities and uh, one of my classmates uh, actually um, her name is Angel Ward, who was actually a previous me uh, member of the board of directors of CANDU. Um, she kind of given me this opportunity for an internship, uh, finance internship um, at JEDI, which then I kind of, so I took the opportunity. I was the intern for, um, you know, two years, but, um, but during that time, I ended up becoming um, the finance and operations manager very early on, just due to some, you know, HR uh, stuff that was going on within the organization. So. I had to jump in pretty quick and, you know, learn the role. And I was then the finance and operations manager for, you know, three years. Then um, at the end of that, I was offered the senior project manager role, which I did for a year. And right now I'm currently uh, the acting CEO for the Joint Economic Development Initiative. And uh, so kind of just to give you a little bit of a background on JEDI is that we're nonprofit organization we provide workforce and economic development services to the 16 first nation communities in new brunswick so it's a lot of it we work with a lot of the communities a lot of the entrepreneurs a lot of job seekers uh, we provide training and there's a there's a very uh, there's a lot of things that we do at jedi to provide support Amazing. Yeah. I know that when I first heard you talk about it at the Youth Summit, I was like amazed. I was like, whoa, they do a lot. But um, definitely congratulations to you on being um, so high up in that uh, and getting involved for sure. And um, to all of the youth here, like um, Stan has so much knowledge to share, like I've already said. And so don't be scared to, I know you're going to go into your breakout rooms soon here and kind of get talking, but don't be scared to ask him a question. I'm sure he's more than open to um, sharing what he has to say. So just unmute your 
yourself and I'll be able to see that and you can definitely ask questions too um, while we're here because why not take advantage of the opportunity while you have it. Um, but um, amazing. So also, I just have a question for you. So I know that you were um, involved quite a bit as a youth um, in what you did in the communities and just even nationally and especially like getting into can do. Um, so when you were a youth, what did you do to learn, share and start initiatives in the community? I just kind of took every, you know, every opportunity that I could take, you know, I took it as a learning opportunity. You know, there's, you know, I mean, I still learn every day. Um, you know, I've, I've been a part of um, you know, uh, Cape Breton University and uh, they have a in business program that which is kind of it inspires people to uh, with the career path of a business degree and what that looks like and what that could be. So I've been, a, I was a part of that for as a mentor for three or four years, which that was, uh, that was very rewarding as well. Um, you know, biggest part is I just like giving back to um, the communities in any way. Definitely. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, that's so important, I think. And um, so many youth like have a voice to share. And I feel like sometimes not everyone amplifies it enough. And so it's so important to do that. And so um, what did you wish that you knew as a youth or that you should have taken better advantage of? Um, I think it's just more or less of just wishing that I had put myself out there more, you know, taking more risks, taking more chances and just seizing the opportunity um, that that arises. And, you know, those opportunities, sometimes they come out of nowhere. Exactly. Yeah. You never know. Honestly, it's crazy. I honestly can say I never knew when going to the summit that I knew that I would um, be where I am now and kind of moderating some of these types of sessions. So it's a very cool um, just uh, just saying yes, like being kind of like a yes person um, definitely is so important. Um, and so how did you get the confidence to begin sharing your voice in everything that you do? Well, I guess a part of it was kind of when I was in school, you know, a big part of, um, you know, a business degree is um, presenting. And, you know, the majority of my classes that I took that our final grade was based on, um, you know, the final group presentations and getting up in front of your classmates and presenting your projects. And um, that's basically just where kind of my confidence started there. And it just, you know, continues to grow. Obviously, um, still not always 100% confident in getting up and presenting in front of, uh, you know, large groups of people, but it's, uh, you know, like you said, like I said, it's just, uh, you know, keep on going, say yes, um, you know, just take on anything you can. And, you know, it's not always going to work out the way you want it, but it's a learning experience. Very true. And a question that's actually going to be asked to everyone once you get into your breakout rooms. Um, so I'm going to put Stan on the spot and maybe ask him first so everyone has an idea. Um, is what have you noticed with economic development in your own community and what does economic development mean to you? Economic development me, like means um, in my community, I don't necessarily, I've seen a lot of growth in economic development in my community. They didn't have an economic development officer or director of economic development for a while. And then they finally brought it back. I sit on the um, advisory committee for my own home community. And um, right now a big focus is creating entrepreneurs creating community owned businesses, uh, you know, individual businesses, and, you know, just really just trying to um, create a better community through business and creating more opportunities and, you know, creating better lifestyles and just creating more opportunities for youth as well. Definitely. Thank you so much, Stan. I, you have so much to share and I love it. Um, I love that you are the first person that we chose to interview for this. Um, and so before we go into our breakout rooms, is there anything um, last that you want to say to the youth here today? I just kind of re want to reiterate that, you know, if something scares you, that just means it's worth trying. And just to really um, take risks, um, you know, Try not to say no to any opportunities that may arise and take uh, take everything as a learning experience. Amazing. So true, Stan. And thank you so much for being here. For
virtual claps. I know that there's a reaction function that you guys can use. And so feel free to use it. I always get mixed up with it though. So I don't blame you if you get scared too, but thank you so much, Stan, um, for being here with us today and great answers to all those questions. Um, like I said, I learned so much from you every time I hear from you. Yes, thank you for using the clapping function. I get scared to do it, but I think it works sometimes. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. And so I would, some of you might not know is that um, one day we're planning this youth form. We want to make it the best that it can be, of course. And so definitely feel free to put your two cents in. We're always here to listen, especially with this being the first one. Um, and so one day we're, we have big dreams for it and maybe hopes to make it into maybe like a type of podcast where we give youth a platform to speak more, um, more publicly. And so definitely feel free to um, let us know how we can make this um, better for you and for everybody. Um, but I think this was an amazing way to start off, like a great way to kick off what these youth forums are gonna all be about. And so thank you so much, Stan, um, for helping us do that. Um, but without um, putting it off a bit longer, I know that you came here to share your voice. And so that's what the youth forum is all about. And so I will let Danielle and Elizabeth start throwing you into breakout rooms. Um, as you can see in the chat, those are kind of the questions that we're gonna use um, to guide us in those breakout rooms. But if you have more to talk about and more to say, like feel free to do so, like it's a chance for you to share your voice. Um, so we'll kind of get them going on putting us into these breakout rooms and you'll have some moderators to kind of help guide the conversation. Um, but definitely um, we'll get into those now and you can, you can get chatting and making connections. Okay, I see people slowly coming back into this main room. Um, so I think everyone's here. Um, but yeah, basically, um, maybe like right in the chat, how did you guys feel about those breakout rooms? Like, how were your conversations? Um, were they super engaging? Do you think you got to share fully what you wanted to share. I know that in the breakout room I was in, I learned some amazing things um, from Desmond, Jay and Isaac, um, all owners of their own businesses, which I'm like, I feel behind because I haven't started a business yet, but maybe one day. Um, but definitely amazing to see um, indigenous people taking up space um, and um, doing what they love in their businesses. So that's definitely great. Um, and thank you everyone for being um, here. Like I said, this is the first one. So like we're learning. We can only go up from here. Keep coming back. Um, invite your friends. We're always like an open community for everybody. And so, like I said, like can do. It's it's supposed to be a family, and we wanted to have that family feel. And so, definitely like be a part of that and engage and throw time. Like you're, you never know what could happen. Like Stan said at the beginning of this, like he's president now. He didn't know he was going to become president when he first started. And so, um, or at least maybe he. I don't know. <laughs> Depends what his goals were, I guess. Um, but definitely, yeah, it's it's an amazing chance. And um, definitely, like, I've had an amazing time um, in these past, like, two two to three years I've been involved with Can Do um, have just been amazing. And I can't say enough great things about um, the whole Can Do staff and Can Do board. Um, but before we close everything off, um, I just want to remind everyone, we do have like evalu those evaluation forms. I know that you get evaluation forms probably after everything that you go to. Um, and so the, um, it's like kind of, it feels tedious sometimes, but it's so helpful and you can win gifts. So Danielle is going to share her screen. Okay, perfect. And we're just going to show you the gifts. Okay. So this is the beauty bag. It's gorgeous. Um, I feel I'm not a, a show person. What's it called? An auctioneer where I can like say, I'm not good with my words all the time, which is weird because I host these things, but the beauty bag is amazing. Um, so gorgeous. Even if like you can find a purpose for it, um, no matter what. And it's, it's gorgeous. Like 
I wish I could win these things, but I'm not allowed to, unfortunately. Um, and then the next thing here is we have this beautiful sweater um, and face mask. And so definitely if you fill out those evaluation forms, you have the opportunity of winning that. And since it's our first one and we don't have many people here, if you fill it out, you have really good odds just saying that. Um, and then moving on to our next one is we have Nietzsche gear gift cards. And so if you guys don't know about Nietzsche gear, it's Kendall Netmaker. He speaks at our events all the time. Um, and so you can definitely win those things. So please fill them out. And thank you, Daniel, for sharing that because my thing would not let me for some reason. Um, but what's a virtual event without some technical glitches, right? And so um, definitely fill out those evaluation forms because you have high odds of winning that. Um, and so maybe we can hear from the facilitators really quickly on how it went in their rooms um, and how they felt. And then for all the youth here, feel free to write in that chat. Um, it's definitely a good place to engage. And so maybe um, let's hear from Danielle first on our room. Sure. Um, yeah, so we had three in our group, um, plus Aubrey and Elizabeth as well. So we heard from Des Desmond, and he's from BC, and he's actually in the lens department right now, currently. Um, he attended one of our links to learnings before um, and mentioned he had his own business as in a, um, with a farm. Um, there's some more details there, but I didn't <laughs> write it down. So yeah, he is already in the lens, kind of already has some knowledge there and um, working with the economic development department there. So that's awesome. Um, Isaac is from Quebec and um, he's actually working on his business in Min Toronto right now and um, uh, basically has his own business as well. So the three that we spoke with have their own businesses already, which is great um, and has a good knowledge or grasp of his own community and what they're looking at right now. So that's, that's awesome to hear. Um, and then Jay was from Winnipeg. Um, he talked about having his own business as well in involving, involving a build, uh, building envelope. So that's pretty cool to hear as well. Um, and we found all of them in common. Most of them don't watch Netflix or any movies. They're all so busy doing great things in their communities or um, towards their careers. So it was good to hear. I think that's about it, yeah. Awesome. And then we'll get a, a moderator from the other room, which I believe was Sayla. Yeah, um, my notes were not the best. Unfortunately, I was too engaged in our amazing conversation. But we had three people in our group as well. We had Drayton. Um, I don't know how to say his last name. So I'm just gonna say first name. We had Drayton, um, Eukarya, and um, sorry, I'm trying to look for the last person. Oh, Erica as well. Um, Erica is also from Winnipeg. She also owns her own media company. She kind of talked to us about kind of how it started and her experiences in that. And um, she is actually, actually, I'm going to let her say this, but she is in line for an award. If you want to tell us what that is, Erica, it's pretty great. <laughs> Uh, sure. <laughs> I just recently won the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business Award for, yeah, Young Entrepreneur Award. Award. Yeah, so congratulations to Erica on that. Um, and then Eukarya in our group. Um, sorry, again, my notes were not the greatest. I know that she was here to network with the youth. Um, she works for... Um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, Center for Aboriginal Human Resource Development <laughs> in Winnipeg. Yeah, and she does a lot of uh, Indigenous outreach and helps um, Indigenous youth and different things like that connect to different jobs and positions. Um, she talked to us about her experiences with networking and kind of her um, uh, tips and tricks and the things that she believes is most useful with that. One thing she did say to anyone is... Um, if you do not already have LinkedIn, you should probably get it. It's a fantastic resource <laughs> and things like that. And then we also had Drayton in our group and he is also from Winnipeg. Um, there is a very large project going on in their um, community right now and it's going to provide their community quite a bit of resources and um, potential opportunities and things like that and Drayton was pretty focused on that um, he's quite excited for it I can't remember the name of it if either Erica or Drayton wants to remind me sorry <laughs> it's with the capion yeah I was gonna yeah. say the capion yeah that's what it's called. Sorry about that. <laughs> and yeah, that was a sum up of our group. 
Amazing. I am so glad to hear that there were good conversations in both groups. Um, like I said, this is going to be a regular thing. So feel free to invite your friends and share your voice. We'll have different questions um, every time and different topics of conversation to have. Um, so thank you so much to all the youth that came out and just everyone in general who came um, from the can do team or here to network or anything like that. Um, it's a great opportunity. And so I am just going to remind you one last time about this case no mentorship, because if I could win it, I would want to win it. And so I want all of you to have the opportunity to do so. And so just again, it is um, for anybody who came here today. It's a five day mentorship valued at $2,500, which is amazing. And you can do it on, completely on your own time. So I know that we had busy bees in our group. Um, and so you can just do it whenever you um, have some free moments. And so basically you just um, send that short essay of 250 to 300 words before March 16th to Elizabeth. Um, and so you'll, she'll be in contact with you after um, this event with the evaluation form. So you'll find her email through that. Um, and basically what they're looking for in a mentee is a clear and defined area of focus in their business or career, availability to commit to meeting with their mentor and a growth mindset and eagerness to learn. And so I know that everyone here, just for the simple fact that you're here, you have all of that. And so um, definitely please apply, send in your essays. 250 to 500 words is not a bunch. It feels like a lot, but if once you get writing, it's amazing and it's, it's a great opportunity. So definitely take advantage of that while you can. Um, and like I said, again, there's not that many people here. So you have chances to win things, you guys. Like that's the fun part about these, I think, sometimes is that you have those opportunities um, on top of getting to meet everyone, of course, and make connections. Um, but thank you all so much for being here. Like I said, we're always open to feedback. Invite your friends. Come out again. Um, these, we, Like I said, we have big dreams for this. And so I know maybe not everyone here listens to the podcast from what I learned. But um, our goal is to one day maybe get it to that point. And so, okay. Hey, I see I saw someone raise their hand that they listen to podcasts I listen to them all the time too I'm like addicted but I listen but I also live on an acreage so when I commute that's where I listen to them but yeah um definitely please um we we have dreams to get it there one day um and give youth a platform to share what they have to say at all times and so we're always open to feedback and this is kind of like a nice way for us to start in that discussion and um hearing what youth want to actually hear about and so um, I'm truly inspired by all of you um, for just being here and hearing that you've like won awards or started your own business or that you're going to school or anything like that. Like that's amazing. And the different organizations that you're involved with too, like that's, that's so incredible. Um, and there's so much that Indigenous youth are doing and it's so important to amplify their voice and what they're doing in um, every space that we can. And so I appreciate you all. I'm thankful for you all. I feel like it sounds like I'm tearing up, but I have allergies, I promise. <laughs> um, um, but it's not hard to make me cry. I can get emotional, but thank you so much everyone for being here. Thank you, Desmond. Um, but yes, if you have any other comments, don't be scared to reach out. You can reach me by email. Um, my email's on the Candy website. I'm sure Stan would be open to connecting. Danielle, Svetlana, Elizabeth. I know Paul was in here for a little bit. Um, Sayla, even if you want to get in touch, please don't be scared to. Um, we're always open. We're a family and we're here to help one another. And so um, don't ever worry about that. And I hope to see you out here again. Um, but with that, um, thank you so much for being out here. Um, Thank you for coming out. Um, and so take care, everybody, and have a good um, weekend ahead of you and an amazing weekend and life moving forward. Take care, everyone.